All right, Steve McCormick showed up. King Rex, Rex is here. We're all going into the Genesis room. Got a lot of anecdotal reports that it sounds great. So, wow. It's... Hey, Gary, good to see you. How you been? Steve, we are playing. We recorded the band live last year. So we are oh, playing, you're playing it now, now? Oh. and we'll record the nice band. And you're gonna play uh, it next year. Awesome, okay. Well, we got a full house here. Take the plaster off your wall. <laughs> Gary does his own amplification. Outboard crossover. Get the sweet spot, we'll take a look at his other ones. Prototype. So, this is the front rear firing tweeter. Yeah. Okay, so you have a little bit of an adjustment, which is good to see. We saw that with the Prana Fidelity. To me, these kind of things are required nowadays if you're not going to do DSP. Carbon fiber with some layers of Baltic birch. That's interesting. Huh. I never heard of this either. Hmm. Heed. New to me. Sorry? This is okay. new to me. So, I'm the turntable guy. Okay. Oh, you are? Sorry? You made the turntable? Yeah, and the arms. Okay, so it's all carbon fiber with Baltic birch layers? Is yeah, that? yeah. Okay. So, I've been making that one for about three years. Okay. So I've been making the arms for ten years. Okay. Um, so... What's the principle of the two different so, diameter? Uh, this is a new, I mean, this is going to be optional, optional mat. And, you know, this one can go on other turntables. The, the slashes are because noise generated from the cartridge through the record bounce around the record and come back and get picked up again. But the idea of the slashes is to keep that in one place so as that moves away the noises can decay in that before they, you know, come back to the okay. 
you, the you're, you're giving the vibration some yeah. place to dissipate, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because cartridges are a lot less than one percent efficient. So ninety percent of the energy, or ninety nine percent of the energy, the record is going into vibration. Gotcha. So. so yeah. You're taking care of that, trying to at least. So this turntable is called the 14-4 because it's got four layers in the platter, aluminium acrylic, aluminium acrylic. Hmm. Um, and th that one's a 14-5 because it adds this carbon fiber mat. It's just optional on this one. So the big diameter is because um, if you make it 20% a normal platter, 20% thicker, you've got 20% more inertia, but if you go... Bigger, 20 percent bigger diameter. You got 40 percent more inertia. Interesting. And you've got more leverage on the belt than someone too. Hmm. So the other interesting thing is um, what's going on underneath. In that, um, there's three stretched O-ring suspension feet. Hmm. Okay. So they're not really feet. They're, it's a suspension because it's actually hanging from them. Interesting. And the center of them is about there, so that was the closest I could get to where the stylus is tracking the record. Oh, okay. Because that's the still point. That's where you want to Because if, if you rock that, you can see that that's the point that stays still. Okay, so that's innovative, yeah. And so most people put it there, but there's no great point in doing that. So Yeah, so the center of the, yeah. Okay. So that that's also why all the stuff's cut away, because you can move the center of gravity to that yes, point as well. Yes, okay. But it's also cut away because it's all about dispersing like motor noise and other vibrations. Okay. And and make it asymmetric and so on because in a way the worst thing you can almost do is make a rectangular turntable. Um, so yeah, there's lots of reasons. But the other one over there has a carbon fiber top. Yeah, so the... I'm still dabbling with that. I think that that may be a step too far. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem to have an acoustic benefit. Okay. Um, and I'm just, it was just trying. The Baltic it birch here. and everything else you've got going on. Yeah. Well, this is isolated. I people to see what they thought. Um, or just for aesthetic purposes, maybe. Yeah. But I, I, where I've got to is I'm thinking it'll just be a, if you like it, you can order it as a, right. as a finish. Okay, cool. Um, so the other thing is, this one has a, um, the battery supply as a, oh, battery supply. Um, as an optional extra. So there's a, um, the normal supply is just a switch mode. Okay. Um, and, you know, turning the power cord on that helps, but actually changing the battery supply is quite a bit better. Okay. For reasons I can't quite explain, because it's not so much about noise. Yeah, but why, yeah, why would it, yeah, it wouldn't matter, would it? Well, because it's pretty damn quiet anyway. Oh, but, and don't that battery deteriorate over... Um, so the batteries in this, I mean, that's why this is big. It's, they're not lithium. Okay. It's also so you can ship it around the world, because I'm in New Zealand. Okay. Um, and, um... So the batteries in this are big lead acid ones. Okay. So they're really um, they're designed for like security alarm systems and yeah. so on. Yeah. Okay. So they're they're slow um, slow to charge, slow to discharge. Sort of okay. Thing. So that's fine. So like an overnight charge gives you an all day run. Really? Um, okay. So this unit over here. Um, Gains this in the bottom, so that's got the batteries built into it. Oh, okay. All right. And it's also got three isoacoustic feet. Okay. Um, so just another, I got you. another tier of isolation, especially from footfall, because in New Zealand we right. have timber frame houses like you do, yeah. and um, it also gains an extra arm board. You're just taping this so people don't hit it. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the 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 idea for the armboard only came like two days before I was going to leave for Munich High End. Okay. And so I literally had this thing and whole whole thing in the drill press, wacky holes cool. in it, which is not not the most professional. Well, most of the time you just need one arm. So yeah. Yeah. Well. 
Yeah, most of us do, but some people have, like, that's an expensive cartridge, that's a less expensive cartridge. Right, right. Um, at Munich, we had a mono, a mono and a stereo. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, mono and stereo, yeah, yeah. So okay. there's, there's, for someone who's like a 78 enthusiast, they have different profiles and so on. So. Okay. Well, cool, yeah, I'm glad you walked me through this because I had never heard of it, never seen it before. So the... I've been making the, the wand um, for about 10 years and Michael Freeman did a review of oh, really? 9 okay. inch about a month ago. Oh cool. Um, so this is a new, um, I'm tentatively calling Dark Light. Okay. Dark hyphen light. This is about music emerging from the darkness sort of thing. Okay. Um, and um, yeah. What's the price point on these? So, the, the turntable with an arm starts at about 6300 Okay, yeah. Um, but because of the whole of arm options, it probably goes up to about 11 or something like that. Okay. Um, so I haven't, haven't fully priced this or this, but this one will probably be about 7 without an arm, or 7 or 8. And this arm will probably be in... Uh, Five to seven region. Okay, so under 15k you can do oh, yeah, setup. Yeah. Okay, so, with a nice cartridge you could put on that. Yeah, 15k you're in. All right, cool. Yeah, thanks for showing me that.